Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. Who is a Jew? The term Jew is a contraction of the name Judean. Judean, Judean, Judea, Judah, and Jew. According to Josephus, the Judeans were a nation of Western Ethiopians. The Yahudim never called themselves Jews. This was a term foreigners applied to them because they believed that they were of Ethiopian origin. In Jewish Antiquities, Book 1, Chapter 6, Paragraph 2, we read that Judas settled the Judeans, a nation of Western Ethiopians. In Tacitus' Annals and Histories, he writes, Many again say that they were a race of Ethiopian origin, who in the time of King Cephas were driven by fear and hatred of their neighbors to seek a new dwelling place. In the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 7, Are you not like the people of Cush to me, O children of Israel, declares Yahuwah? Did I not bring you, Israel, from the land of Mitzurim, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and Aram from Kir? I have a few questions that I would like you to consider. Have you ever wondered why North Africa, including the Horn of Africa, is classified as white? And have you also ever wondered how and why were these Hamitic North Africans given honorary white status? According to the United States Census Bureau, under the category of race, they define a white person as a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. In Jared Diamond's book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, The Fates of Human Societies, on page 378, he writes, Whites ranging from Egyptians and Libyans to Moroccans occupy Africa's north coastal zone and the northern Sahara. Those North Africans would hardly be confused with blue-eyed, blonde-haired Swedes, but most lay people would still call them whites because they have lighter skin and straighter hair than peoples to the south termed blacks. I call this form of deception verbal alchemy. Because it's scholars, historians, um, people in religious institutions that seek to change these black people into white people through the stroke of a pen. Knowing that the ancient Israelites were always compared to looking like the North Africans, the Egyptians, the Canaanites, the, uh, the Ethiopians, the Cushites. And so... If you can change the identity of these North Africans, then you can change the identity of the ancient Hebrews, who have always been a black people. Western Christianity has tried to avoid answering the question, what did the ancient Hebrews look like? Because in answering this question, you also answer the question of what the Messiah looked like. Many are quick to say that it does not matter assuming the position of spiritual and moral high ground, while ignoring the fact that the false image of an Aryan Jesus has been promoted to the world as the image of the Messiah. While Christians may admit that the Messiah was not white and that his name was not Jesus, many are quick to say that he definitely was not black. Instead of telling the truth, they promote the middle ground fallacy that he was something between white and black, often using confusing euthanisms 
like he looked Mediterranean or Middle Eastern in appearance, which also fall under the U.S. Census Bureau's definition of white. Another favorite of those that do not want to say that he was black is to say that he was a person of color or that he was olive skin and complexion. However, many misuse the term olive skin. The ancient meaning was referring to individuals with very dark or near black complexions. Olives, like many fruits, are green in its unripened state. As olives ripen, they turn to a deep black. 